legally speaking <clears throat> with me tarun nangia when we recently uh, did a series on chief justice of india justice dhananjay mm-hmm. chandrachud before he took over we said there is a lot of hope uh, and uh, as soon as he took over we saw the big decisions coming in now mainly on the issue of bail he's made some very big announcements uh, the biggest one being that on top of the board there will be 10 bail matters listed each day before the benches which means a lot of bail cases are going to be heard he also spoke on the issue of lower courts being hesitant to deny bail which is very important a lot of our businessmen and industrialists on whose uh, in a sense uh, uh, the whole company runs by promoters in india many companies are promoter driven uh, how how important that is when bail is denied and why this statement coming from a chief justice of india assume significance that only my panel can share with all of you uh, i want to introduce you to my panel uh, we have with us the eminent jurist senior advocate parak tripathi good to see you sir and looking forward as usual to some interesting uh, interventions and also a couplet or two uh, i have with me mahesh agarwal uh, managing partner of agarwal law associates one of india's leading litigation law firms at the supreme court of india i have with me mohit saraf he is managing partner of saraf and partners one of india's leading law firms um, i have also with me samarjit patnayak he is partner with karanjawala and company and he is represents one of india's leading law firms at the supreme court of india in the litigation practice good to see you samarjit uh, and without wasting much ado may i request that in the first 3 minutes or so mr mahesh agarwal if you could uh, lay the ground before i move on to parak tripathi for his initial comments over to you mr agarwal so this is a very critical topic which justice chandrachud on within first week of his appointment has raised now bail has become such a serious issue with not just corporates but with everybody in india that with the enforcement agencies like cbi ed sfio we have multiple agencies which investigate the same offense each agency has a right to arrest and a person is required to get bail in each offense separately so you have a say a bank fraud or alleged bank fraud a person can be arrested in cbi then in ed and then in sfio and he has to now apply bail for all three separately the parameters are slightly different and as the law is progressing the parameters for grant of bail are getting more and more difficult as a result what is happening is that earlier we had like 50 to 60% of the jail population being under trials now it is rising to 80% so 80% of the people who are in jail are not convicts they are not persons who have committed offense they are persons who are waiting for a trial or even worse during investigation so there are cases where people are arrested during investigation and thereafter during trial those people are waiting for bail as a result of which the docket before the courts is getting impossible to manage in supreme court high court trial courts bail matters are flooded people are crying every day we have mentionings before the court that please hear me for bail so justice chandrachud has set the tone correctly and by saying that the trial court should not fear granting bail just for the reason what will the high court say or the senior court. he has laid the ground very well thank you so much mr peshakar <clears throat> for laying the ground for the show i'll go across to senior advocate parak tripathi sir you also in a sense represent many of such uh, big, big industrialists and business <laughs> in many of these matters if i may request you uh, to give your first comments you know as mahesh rightly said this is a very serious matter and there are three striking aspects of bail jurisprudence i think uh, which should always be kept in mind by us at one level is as the chief justice of india pointed out the hierarchic i call it the hierarchical fear the hierarchical fear under which a district judge or a sessions judge functions there's a, a very interesting judgment of zarima begum of the high court where it is pointed out that because of this hierarchical fear in a cyclostyle manner following cyclostyle format bail is routinely rejected because if you grant bail then the judge who supervises you from the high court will go through your judgment and then you don't know what will happen so there is this hierarchical fear that let's not our 
He, if he has a good case, he'll get bail from the High Court or the Supreme Court. This is one part of it. The second part, which adds to this fear, which is not hierarchical, but which is a fear of today's world, is of trolling and of social media targeting. So if I am a district or sessions judge, I grant bail, say, in a POSCO matter or in some matter which is sensitive and where the allegation is heinous, then before the hierarchical fear comes in, I'll be so badly trolled that I'll almost become a paria of a judge. No, no person wants to be in that position because you have done what you thought was your duty to do. It's not with joy that each time a judge grants you bail. He examines the law and says, well, you are entitled to it, so you are. In, I'm putting you, enlarging you on bail. So these are the two aspects together, which I call the hierarchical fear aspect. Then there is an institutional factor. What is this institutional factor? Judges will tell you, particularly the district court judges, uh, which is our grassroots judiciary really, is the apex of the grassroots judiciary. Yeah, session judge will tell you, look, Mr. Tripathi, I know that eventually when it comes to trial, this gentleman will get free. And I know in my bones that he has committed the offense. So let this fellow remain in jail. So let the punishment precede the trial. Now that's inverting the whole process. And therein lies the second very important part. The success rate of conviction is abysmal. So if you have a success rate of 5%, 7%, I'm told in PMLA cases 2%, then a, a, a person who is at the apex of the grassroots judiciary may feel that, of course, this guy has done something wrong. Let him remain in jail for some time at least, because I know he'll go scot-free. Now, that's a very dangerous jurisprudential thinking because it destroys one of the basic tenets of our system. So this is one element. The second element is, uh, and these are the two elements, hierarchical and uh, institutional factor. The third is the system load which it puts. So every bail which you reject, in any given case, there'll be 10, 15, 20 accused and one or three, one or two or three persons on the periphery who feel that any time they can be made an accused. So all of them will rush either for anticipatory bail or for bail. Then they will go to the high court. Then they'll go to the Supreme Court, depending on how important the matter is and how uh, well versed the lawyers are, they'll be able to get a hearing. So they will nudge out and elbow out genuine cases, death sentence cases in higher courts, cases which re require decisions on tri post-trial. All those cases will be pushed out of the criminal system and you'll be left to basically a bail adjudicatory mechanism going up to the Supreme Court. And that is why when the Arnab Goswami matter came, the bench pointed out that, look, the high court should proceed, be very cautious in denying bail and should proceed on the basis that if you must err, you must err on the side of personal liberty. The uh, Justice Sanjay Kaur's bench also, Suomoto initiated uh, uh, proceeding that all bail appeals must be given complete priority so they are heard and disposed of. And there I think the Chief Justice has done another very good thing. Namely, he has released only, I think, on 22nd, and uh, registry note which says that every bench will now, as uh, Tarun told us, every bench every day will be hearing 10 bail matters and 10 transfer petitions. So therefore, these are actually uh, in a very uh, different way. These are low fruits in a way, because in bail matters, you don't need erudite judgments. Bail matters, you because if you say anything either way as a higher court, it will affect the trial one way or the other. So basically, there is an element of, uh, if I may say so in a lighter way, in the way Pharaoh used to do justice with gladiators. Do we kill him? Yes. Do we kill him? Yes. No. So that is how bail jurisprudence has to be dealt with. And there's one more aspect which I'll deal with later, which is that in India, uh, the police proceeds on the basis that investigation begins with incarceration. Let's grab the fellow and then we'll investigate. That's not the way it is supposed to be. The incarceration has to be the end of the process of investigation. There's a very nice article by a young lady lawyer who points that out, that you can't begin investigation by an arrest. You have to end investigation and then arrest. Thank you so much, Mr. Tripathi. We missed the couplet in this answer, but very well explained to the viewers. If you come. Uh, I'll go across to Samarjit Patnayak. Uh, uh, Samarjit, I have, you have had discussions earlier also. You... Uh, on your behalf, engage some of India's top lawyers 
from the lower court all the way to the supreme court for these kind of issues what has been your experience and can you compare it in light of justice chandrachud's decision uh, tarun i think what uh, justice chandrachud has uh, brought in now the way the listings are to be done and probably your topic today is very closely linked we have to understand what is leading to the backlogs and the building up of the uh, bail uh, matters both not only before the supreme court but before the various high courts <clears throat> now as mr uh, prag tripathi uh, rightly mentioned it was it was if if i recall it was justice chandrachud in uh, uh, arnav goswami's matter who had mentioned that you know the courts of first instance which are the our district courts and these courts are very tight fisted in terms of granting bail now reasons are varied if you read any bail order where the bail is most likely rejected you will come across typical uh, reasoning for rejecting those bail orders but many a times what happens is <clears throat> generally the courts the, the the low judiciary would want to you know live with the current public perception that's there if it's if it's a important case if it's a case in the media etc and also there's something within our uh, low judiciary which is called you know every district court within the uh, district court level either it's a district judge himself or a uh, uh district and sessions judge one of the senior ones they are also assigned with the uh, investigating and uh, vigilance powers so most of the time which mr parag tripathi was mentioning is exactly this the hierarchy system in which any sensitive matter in which a bail if given if granted will surely draw attention of the concerned judge who will again then scrutinize the judgment and if a negative report goes then there is fear for the judge delivering the uh, bail of some kind of a backlash or what would the uh, high court think if the matter is challenged so this is a kind of a fear which the low judiciary the judge dealing in the first instance with the bail always gets confronted with and probably officially the bail order may have whatever reasons but most of the time these are the reasons which are in the mind of these judges and everyone and they want to play it safe frankly speaking they just want to play it safe because not granting of a bail may not question so much as granting of one and this system is not going to change that fast because even the judge who is uh going through this judgment is giving a report to the high court he may or may not have some interest in it so so this system is not going to be changed overnight and hence most of the cases where bails are granted obviously then it goes to the high court the high courts get clogged and if again the high court also uh, does not grant bail in the appeal then we come to the supreme court originally supreme court supreme court being the constitutional court should be spending much more time on constitutional uh, you know dealing with constitutional matters and i think if i read somewhere correctly it's probably 6 to 8% of constitutional matters that the supreme court is able to deal with <laughs> and uh, matters like transfer petition now what are transfer petition transfer petitions are primarily these uh, family court Uh, family matters where either of the party has filed for a transfer and these matters would actually not need too much of time to be consumed and these matters can be disposed of early and also in our high court and uh, district court level what is taking so much of time of the courts even if uh, they are dismissing the bail applications are the system of allowing a complainant on whose bias the if, if it's a private complaint if a complaint has been registered for him to be represented for him to file a reply the state to file a reply and this is i'm not talking about a status report from the investigating agency but a reply from the prosecution a reply from the complainant these these 
procedural things should be done away with. It is already uh, uh, not being applicable in many of our high courts. So for example, Chandigarh, uh, most of the Punjab and Haryana district courts as well as the Chandigarh High Court, and they don't have the concept of uh, in criminal proceedings, at least in bail matters, filing of reply, etc. But many other courts do have. That consumes a lot of time as well. So most of the time can be saved. Bail applications can be purely dealt with the parameters set by the Honorable Supreme Court, which says whether on Prime FSI you feel that the the accused, the person applying for bail is uh, will be available to represent or to be present before the court and the trial does not suffer and, it, and there is no way how he can abscond law or, or rather he will not interfere with the trial, the uh, prosecution or the uh, uh, interfere with the investigation. These are the only two, three parameters that need to be seen. And all other procedural reply, etc. if gone away with, at least precious time will be saved to, in the courts can invest this time in at least uh, dealing with the trials rather than dealing with bail applications. So I think that is where this uh, new listing system by uh, Justice Sandrachud becomes very important. And probably it will also, since the Supreme Court itself is making this uh, stand and taking this step, probably it will give more force to the high courts and even to the district courts to see how important, how much importance the uh, Supreme Court is giving to bail applications and these kind of applications. And probably various courts should also should start implementing this as a uh, way to list matters thanks 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 for thanks for sharing that example and some experiences from various high courts i'll go to mr mohit saraf managing partner of saraf and partners uh, i want to know from you two angles a you deal a lot with top corporate bosses of india corporate india on one side and the investors who invested put a lot of money into this country uh, do you think they take into uh, uh, in a sense account what are the risks of incarceration in India? For example, long ago, a consumer durable company, uh, a, a single consumer had some problem and a court in UP had issued a warrant for the bosses in South Korea. It led to a furor a few years ago. So could you juxtapose uh, uh, what decision Justice Chandrachud has taken to the impact on the investment climate in India with bail uh, in, in mind, your experiences and also your comments on his decision? I think, Tarun, if you remember, you have invited me to your show before Justice Chandrachud took over. And I, that time I had brought my thought process. What the corporate India really uh, looks at Justice Chandrachud and expects from. And one of the important things was quick resolution of dispute before courts and adjudication of disputes, adjudication of inquiry, finalization of these. And, and bail is an integral part of it, really, at the end of the day. What is bail is a very important part because whenever the state is doing an inquiry and, and if there are bailable or non-bailable offenses, people can be put behind bars. And I think our jurisprudence is very clear that bail is a rule and jail is an exception. I think that is a very clear thing. Now, if you look at the Justice Channel 2, I think what he has done is he, he has really got into the adjudication of issues before the court on the, on the week two, which is a very, very important thing. That's number one. Number two, what you also is equally important. Like I remember I was drafting the electricity law for India and I was working with the World Bank for the government of India. And one of the important things World Bank said that, hey, guys, you put electric meters all over the, all over the consumer's place and the electricity board said this is a most idiotic idea. They don't pay for electricity. Now we have to spend on consume on the on the meters as well. And the electric and the World Bank guy said, if it is metered, it can be collected. So first get the metering start. Same thing what Justice Chandrachud has done is he's acknowledged the problem. He says my lower subordinate judiciary is very critical. It is not subordinate in hierarchy, but on People's right, it is very superior. That is the first court where people come for bail. That's the first report. Secondly, it says, he said that I have a full faith in judiciary and my subordinate judiciary. And they should not get worried about what media talks. 
or the trial by media. They should follow the law. So I would say he has created the metering scenario that please follow the law. Don't get worried, as Parag said, that what media will say, what people will told. Don't worry about that. Follow the law. That's the second thing. And in management principle, Tarun, there is a principle which is called 80-20 principle. 80% things in life give you 20% benefit. 20% things give you 80% benefit. What Justice Chandrachud has done is he's attacked those 20%. It is few minutes of a day and the impact it will do. Because if you remember, Krishna Ayer, Justice Krishna Ayer also said that this is a very, very important part that under Article 20, freedom and, and say the liberty can only be denied by procedure of law. And that procedure has to be just, fair, and reasonable. So what he's trying to say is, please do not worry about media trial. Please do not worry about anything. And what is more important is, right now, I think the biggest problem is this economic offense issue. And where, if there is an economic offense, it is presumed that there's a conspiracy. I would say if there's an economic offense, there can be laws to accept that. I think, but there's no, and, but the, the law is that there, there should be a. The jurisprudence on economic offense will also get settled because there's no point as what Parag said that you put the person in the, because you know that he will never get convicted, but you generally believe that he should be punished. And therefore, you put him in the jail, let him be there. And therefore, the principle of 60 days, 90 days, the investigation needs to be completed. All these things will be tested, even in case of economic offense. So I would say this is the 20% thing which will give 80% benefit. It will improve a huge investment climate. Because today, if I'm a private equity and I'm investing in a company, I'm very worried that I don't know when the promoter will be put behind bars and he'll never come out. And then my all investi- my all investments have gone for a six. Because I can't see, because generally people will, India, I mean, everybody believes that the fair trial is a different issue. But the minute somebody is picked up, he is held guilty. And that's an important part. I think what Parag said is so important, and this is an important issue. It will set the precedent in just not the few minutes. But I would say it will be a long drawn process Every judiciary at the lower level and the high court level will look at prima facie that is there something against the person? Is there something? And then the investigating agency, think about it, the investigation agency will understand that they have a 60 days or 90 days period to complete it. They cannot extend it beyond that. So this one thing can actually improve the entire, entire, I would say, criminal justice system in the country, particularly these these EDs and, and, and all other investigative CBIs and others. So it's a very, very, very big decision. I hope uh, uh, Justice Chandrachur monitors it and, and make sure that it does it. And, and I, I, I was seeing it that there are almost like 10,000 bail application, which is pending in different levels. So I would say this will clean up the whole system. And remember one thing, that people are very frustrated when bail hearings are not being held, people have no basis. And generally, there is a belief that you will therefore you will not be given a bail. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks for the intervention. I'll to go to Mahesh Agarwal, managing partner of Agarwal Law Associates. Uh, Mr. Agarwal, two things. Uh, a, especially we see this in financial crimes that bail is slow to come by. Uh, what do you think will be the impact of Justice Chandrachud's decision when a lot of these matters in quick succession will get a hearing in Supreme Court. And in your view, what message goes to corporate India? Because a lot of time, the whole business hinges on the promoter being out. We've seen businesses collapse when the promoter is in jail. Because India is mainly family and promoter-driven companies, it's, it's a bulk of corporate India. Your experience and a few suggestions also I don't think it will be immediate that district judiciary will start giving bails, uh, you know, because the process is slow. Uh, uh, so that is why also, what do you think will happen on that front? Or do you think it's easier said than done? I think, see, currently there's a big disconnect in what the Supreme Court lays down in the matter of judgments, which says bail is a rule, 
there is a huge difference between an under trial and a convict the court should be free to give bails and personal liberty is far more important than anything else after india has gained independence what have we gained we have gained personal liberty human rights they are the topmost in the judicial system so what the supreme court lays down and in real life there is a complete disconnect when you go to court for a bail the judge will ask two questions what is the maximum sentence you say 7 years how many days you spend inside one year very welcome after one year basically the mindset is that if the offense needs you to be in for 7 years there is a good chance you will be acquitted but i feel that you have committed an offense you must spend 2 3 years inside that is the mindset with which bail applications are being considered in the lower courts so what the court lays down at the top doesn't percolate down the supreme court has laid down objective tests if those objective tests are applied the things will be very smooth what is the objective test court has in many judgments said there is a triple test requirement triple test is are you a flight risk is there a risk that you will tamper with evidence or you can influence witnesses simple this is the triple test where investigation is complete charge sheet has been filed all the documents are before the court supreme court says follow the triple test now so far as flight risk is concerned after the vijay malya case there is a fear that a person will run away he will not participate in trial and the trials will not happen the flight risk can be easily managed by restricting a person from traveling take his passport uh, put conditions so that the trial can be smooth tampering with evidence 99% of the cases today either electronic evidence or documentary evidence in the course of investigation everything is collected by the investigating agency and filed in the court there is absolutely no risk of any tampering with evidence in so far as influencing witnesses are concerned person people say that you are a promoter you are influential you can influence a witness this thing which requires a bit more concern can be handled by putting excessive restrictions putting conditions that if you violate you will be put in this is the triple test laid down by the supreme court it is an objective test it removes all kind of sub subjectivity what is subjectivity that the allegation is that there is a few thousand crore uh, 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 bank fraud and therefore you would have done something to stay inside this mindset needs to change with what the chief justice has now said it has given lot of confidence i think both to the judiciary and also to the promoters and corporates that there'll be a big mindset change and we all hope that this triple test is applied with confidence so basically what another, justice, yes you're saying something please complete another major issue is that today when an investigating officer investigates a case any files a police report or a charge sheet he feels confident that i have discovered the biggest kind of fraud in the history of india this is the biggest scam i have uncovered i have got the biggest people in india to the book and i put them behind jail his thinking at that time is that forget the trial this guy must be sent inside and he should suffer a punishment that is the mindset with which the prosecutor goes to the court that is the prosecutor telling the court that if you let him out he'll commit another fraud mr agarwal if i want to ask you this a supplementary question before i go to mr parak tripathi every time an arrest is made in the media the news is 20000 crore scam 40000 crore 60000 crore and finally the charge sheet will have allegations of 50 60 crores do you think these big figures which get leaked planted in the media prejudice the courts mind against giving bail the courts have time and again said that there should not be a media trial when either the investigation is going on or the trial is going on here you would have seen in big cases evidence is shown on tv the media will carry the evidence ki look at this document we have discovered this document even before the person who is being investigated comes to know the prosecutor will tell the court or leak it out somehow that this is the evidence what happens there is a huge mindset change that the 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 an opinion is formed both uh, in the media in the public as also the judges who are watching tv that this guy has committed a fraud there has to be a restriction on some kind i'm not saying censorship a restriction that during investigation the the investigating material is not leaked out to the media because that creates a huge uh, kind of effect on the prejudice okay point well taken i'll go across to senior advocate parag tripathi a uh, in terms of your thinking uh, the decision of justice chandrachud what will impact will it have on the investment climate in india uh, because 
uh, we have heard even ministers uh, in this government earlier saying that uh, Invest India can succeed if the court process is faster, when people feel that they get speedy justice. Uh, getting bail, I think, is one of the basic tenets you need uh, to you have to have personal liberty. Uh, so, your comment on that, and do you see any foresee any hurdles with this decision? Uh, do you think the district courts will will take their own time, uh, you know, to become liberal in giving bail? Uh, and also, the good impact of this decision that more than say about one fifty matters of bail will be heard by the Supreme Court, so a lot of people will get justice quick. Your comments on all these three issues. Yeah, Tarun, you see, I think Mahesh made a good point when he said that Supreme Court judgments in their impact at the uh, judiciary, at the, the grassroots level, there is a long lead. There's a long lead time because there is a mindset which has developed. And one way of meeting it is also, because what happens today is that generally the administrative judge who examines a track record of a district judge only would look at, of course, the quality of judgments and how many matters has he granted bail. You should also examine how many matters has he not granted bail and was it justified. I'm not saying be punitive, but that sends a positive reaction that, look, you have to also grant bail. If you don't grant bail, it is as bad or maybe worse than granting bail in a 50-50 case. So that's important. Secondly, Apropos another point which uh, arose in our discussion of the panel, the, I, the IO should also know that if as an investigating officer you create a, you say it's a fraud of 60,000 crores and it comes down to 40 crores, then there has to be some accountability. I'm not saying punish the IO because the IO is doing his duty. But surely one has to know that sensationalization doesn't help. Because when you leak evidence, then as an accused, I know what is the case against me by seeing the evening's uh, television. Then surely it, it affects to a very limited extent the judicial mind because it's a trained mind. But it affects totally the trolling mind. It affects totally the social media. So it's an it's a effect which, is, which keeps on coming. It's like an avalanche. It sort of becomes bigger and louder and noisier. So that's one part. Secondly, I think, what the, uh, the speech of the Chief Justice emphasizes is that it gives judicial space. It compels giving judicial space to personal liberties of citizens, and which is exemplified in bail jurisprudence. A wrongful denial of bail is the most hurtful thing that can happen. I remember about 15 years back in a property sale worth 100 crores, those days, that was a big amount for a residential property sale. The allegation in the criminal complaint was that the Delhi Metro, I was told, would go under my house. This was cheating done on me, and therefore I sold it at a lesser price. Can you imagine? I mean, this is something which is to be laughed at. Samajit's reaction is absolutely correct, and the fellow's complaint should be dismissed. But the law is, if I made an allegation, and if I somehow tick the boxes of 420, etc., then the FIR has to be lodged. And that matter took four years to settle. So that is the problem. We have to change our mindset. But most importantly, I think we have to give greater judicial space to personal liberty of citizens. And that is where I think my good friend Ghalib comes in. And we must come back there. Muddat hui hai yaar ko mehma kiye hue, joshe kade se bazb charaga kiye hue. We have, to, we have to light up the bazb with personal liberty again. And obviously, whichever line you take as as Mohit rightly said, Samajit said, you're bound to make mistakes. Judges are human beings. We all make mistakes. But the question is, which is the larger public good? How it will really affect the investment climate? Well, very important. If you remember, there was the 2G judgment of the Supreme Court, which had come, where they rightly pointed out, the Supreme Court rightly pointed out that, look, this, these licenses have been given in a wrong way, to put it very mildly. But the result was that those licenses had been sold on to foreign investors. Now, they got deprived of the license. So it is there that you have to do the fine tuning and say, these people who have illegally procured the license, fair enough. But let the government examine that has the sale, the person who has eventually bought it, has he done something wrong as well? Or has he taken it on its face value? Because that is important. 
for the foreign investor. He should know that when he buys a license, he's safe. He should know, as Mohit pointed out, when he invests in a company, the whole management and promoters won't go inside jail, so his investment goes. That is what is important. And therefore, if you must are, you must are on the side of giving bail, because even the American Supreme Court had come up with a very interesting concept of a two-track analysis, that where your basic liberties are involved, you take a much stricter view and you grant them rather than not grant them. When there are less than basic uh, rights involved, you can you can give the uh, play in the joints. And that has been accepted in India. Point, point, very well taken. So indeed what Justice Chandrachud has done is boost for the investment climate in India. Uh, it's a very far-reaching impact of this decision that has and will happen in due course as this message percolates down and also the message goes out to the industry because if the courts are hearing over 150 bail cases every day, obviously these decisions will have an impact. I'll go across to Samarjit Patnayak from Karanjawala and Company. Mr. Patnayak, uh, two things here. Uh, a, if there is a headline in the papers or the media that the scam is 15,000 crores, but the businessman in question submits before the court that his passport may be impounded and he's available for questioning whenever wanted. Uh, do you think it's very hard for the court even then to give bail because there is so much of euphoria, so much of news spreading? And secondly, uh, because uh, at the Supreme Court level, what do you think will be the impact when on a day-to-day -day basis between 150 to 160 bail applications or more would be heard, uh, these two answers, if you could share with the viewers. I'll answer your second question first. Well, uh, like Mr. Agarwal also pointed out that, uh, of course, it's a, there is a huge gap between what Supreme Court lays down and how much it percolates to the grassroots level. <clears throat> now, if we speak about Supreme Court now, it will be a new way that the benches would be dealing with these, not so much of ex so many extra matters, but maybe 10 uh, transfer petitions and 10 bail, uh, bail applications. Uh, that's what the notification says. Now, it also should not be a case where our benches feel that they have to deal with these additional applications, additional uh, transfer petitions, bail applications, and hence the way they are dealt with, the way they should be looked into, and the amount of time that needs to be given to these applications should not, should not be compromised with, number one. Number two, of course, it's only with time we'll be able to figure out both how the new system is uh, going ahead and also whether the advantage or the benefit that we are all hoping that this would bring in for the applicants, uh, you know, there could be a situation where because the of the way and the amount of time that has been given to these applications and so maybe the bail applicants are not happy with the way the new system is functioning. So that's, that's, that's one thing which probably very soon we'll uh, get to figure out. And <clears throat> as far as your other question is concerned, <clears throat> how much, uh, wh what's the quantum of the offense obviously should not determine and cannot determine, that's 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 the law. The amount of offense, whether it is 15,000 crores or 150 crores, or that, that shouldn't determine and the rights and liberties of an individual who is uh, uh, who is applying for a bail. Now, unfortunately, that has become the practice. At least, at least while dealing with bail applications, I would say, with my experience, not only at the district court level but to some extent also in the high court. And why are we only talking about bail applications? There are various such <clears throat> applications. Say, for example, an application. Uh, 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 asking for the applicant to travel abroad, even if the applicant is already on bail and the apl applicant is filing an application for to travel abroad out of India for any reason, whether it is medical reason, for any other reason, most of the time these applications are dealt with negatively by the district courts. Now, obviously, there's a lot of disparity in the way the, the district courts and the various district courts in various states are now dealing with it. 
but most of the time they are dismissed. And these applications, which by putting in uh, restrictions and conditions of uh, uh, fixed deposits to be deposited or any other stringent condition can easily be dealt with at the district court level or at best also the high court level also go up to the Supreme Court. So this is so there are various other kind of applications which can be equated with the nature of the uh, bail applications, which are also being similarly dealt with like the bail applications and probably with a with a positive outcome of the way uh, with the way these bail applications are now going to be dealt with by the Supreme Court, maybe that will give more uh, strength and probably more uh, uh, strength to the district court judges to deal with it more bravely, I would say. To be very honest, I can I can I can put it in one word that our district court judges have to deal with bail applications and these kind of applications like a travel application, etc., with a lot of more courage. Of course, of course, on the merits of the case, they have to deal with it. I'm not saying every application should be allowed, but it has to be dealt with courage. Thanks, and, thanks. and the amounts, amount of the offense should not be and it cannot be a criteria uh, uh, under the legal system thanks thanks for sharing that uh, uh, view and also your uh, comments i'll go across to mohit saraf uh, managing partner of saraf and partners uh, mr saraf two things uh, any businessman when he looks at india will routinely track the media and get to know that this businessman is jail no bail for 10 months this businessman is jail no bail for 2 years this businessman is jailed, no bail for 12 months. Then he can say that, okay, I'll be based out of Singapore or I'll be based out of Australia or I'll be based out of Dubai or wherever, uh, but I'll do business in India. I'll also hedge against problems and divert my investment to some other country so that, you know, I, I don't have all my investments uh, in one country. A lot of businessmen do that. That affects when, when, when as a cluster, if businessmen start to do that activity, it, it affects the business climate in a country. Do you think given that the courts have a lot of responsibility in ensuring uh, that the business climate is strengthened and uh, Justice Chandrachud has taken one such good step, the biggest start that he could make is with this decision. Your comments on that. I think today we are standing at a very interesting crossroad. In 10, 12 years, our, our, our average per capita income right now in India is $2,500, which will go to $6,000. And you can imagine that the basic 800 million people who are at the very basic level, what life-changing phase we are going through. And, and therefore, money makes money. This is a simple thing. If the money investment does not happen, productivity does not increase, and people do not go over the line they don't have health facilities, they don't have education facilities, these are important. In a country which is almost 1.2, 1.4 billion people, we don't have capital. We are short of capital. We are, you can imagine how bad we are on a nation, on a capital. And we need a lot, we need a trillions of dollars of capital for improved productivity. Now, in a situation like that, if you think about this, is how can you attract capital this is probably one of the only countries which is deprived of capital and where the writing on the wall is, investors be aware, you can be put behind the jail. Most countries, investors' economic offenses are penalized economically. If you see today, if you look at FCPA, Foreign Corrupt Practices Act, now US companies are not allowed to do corruption globally. Let's assume they do, they come to India and do a million dollar corruption. They end up paying billions of dollars of fine. That is the way to do it. They don't put people behind the bar. They have a facility that you, on your own, you discover, you go and confess and pay penalty and move on in life. Now, that, if that is what is done in India, that whether it's a big issue or a small issue, people will come, confess, pay and move on in life. Now, what you're doing is, you are basically putting people behind the bars. We've heard from everybody that the conviction rate is low. Eventually, they will not be convicted. They'll all go out. And what does it do? That people start living outside India, start doing business, which is, in my view, very unfortunate. Because if they live in India, they support Indian economy. 
So I would say it's a very important part that this particular thing, because let's assume, I think we have heard uh, Mahesh saying that this will be very slow to transmit. Forget about all this thing. Tomorrow, 20 applications get rejected by district court and they get approved by Supreme Court. You imagine what it will do to the district court. And that is an important thing. And that is what the mind change, right? that is what the metering did. The mind change will happen that if you reject without application of mind, because of media trial, because of the number, because somebody is creating and without any basis that the person will flee or tamper evidence. Like, just look at the, the Jacqueline Fernandez case. She got gift and she is proceeds of crime was shared with her. And she, what she was in, she involved in commissioning. That is a prima fasci, which the prosecutor has to prove. So therefore, this is a very, this is like an Andher Nagli, that you basically, you are at the whims and fancy of investigating agencies. And again, remember one thing, the investigating agencies also do not have the best technology or access to everything. And therefore, they need time. They just can't finish it. So I would say this will have a, it will have a mind-blowing effect on the entire system because they have to finish things in 60 to 90 days. They will not pick up. Their, their, their fun will not be that they put people behind the bar and imagine, forget about they, whether they are prosecuted or not, but they are behind the bar for two years, so I've done my job correctly. No. And that is an important thing, that if tomorrow's strictures are going to be passed against prosecutors, against government agency, and you have not done that, you have not proved the prima facie, I would say this will set an interesting ball rolling, and globally it will send a wrong, right signal that they, this is where the judiciary, like just having an independent judiciary does not get you anywhere. The independent judiciary has to deliver. And this is, I would say, that 80-20 principle, this is a high delivery model with Justice Chandrachud has picked up. And it will deliver a moment, amount of, I think, goodwill globally that the judiciary is there to check executive just to make sure that that legislature wish is, is actually supported. It's a very, very good thing. And this will go a long way that we are a country where we respect fundamental rights, right to freedom. Thanks, thanks, thanks for that intervention. Uh, now we have only two minutes left. So we'll take 30 second closing comments from each of our panelists. It's a big decision, a big day. Justice Chandrachud uh, has done uh, uh, what decision he's taken has brought happiness to the faces of many. They have a right to be heard, which was denied to them. Now they will get that right. Uh, we'll start uh, with Mr. Mahesh Agarwal very quickly and we'll go on and close the show after that. Over to you, Mr. Mahesh Agarwal. Like you've been emphasizing for investment purposes, any big company, any foreign investor who's investing in India, nowadays we get queries from them as to what are the criminal risks their people will face when they come to India. Point one, will they be, will they have to go to jail if some, somebody else in the company commits an offense? Second, bigger issue is uh, the right of the uh, travel restrictions. I think you will have to do a separate show on travel restriction. That will become a major issue with for the foreign investors who are coming into India. Mm -hmm. So while the bail applications are being heard, I hope that this percolates down to the high court and the trial courts. High courts also should have special benches to hear bail applications on priority. Some time can be devoted every morning between 10 courts or 15 courts to be here bail applications. If there's a fast disposal in high court, bails are granted and limited interference in the Supreme Court, I think we'll be able to uh, solve this issue and give personal liberty to our citizens. Thanks. Thanks. I'll go to uh, Senior Advocate uh, Parak Tripathi. There are two big points. Of course, I agree with most of which has been said by my learned uh, panelists here. One, I think we need to put in funds and technology in our investigating agencies and the method in by which they investigate. That is one very important part of a long-term solution. Latest technology. Two, our district judges way of functioning, the environment which we provide them and the working conditions have to be improved. Because forget Delhi, when you go away from Delhi, that's a big problem. That's point number two. Three, uh, I can also imagine the pressure this will put on the various benches of the Supreme Court, because our judges are extremely overworked. 
whether it is the high court, the district court, or the apex court. This, this is one part. Secondly, we must remember that bail is not an issue merely for corporates alone. Corporates have a different kind of a problem. Their impact is in a different way. It affects the economy as a whole. The problem is also extremely acute of those marginalized people who don't find a representation in court, who can't afford a lawyer in court. They need that justice as much. So that is the focus which we have to give. We have to strengthen our legal aid processes so young, bright lawyers get the opportunity to represent such people and take them out from under trials who have no chance of being convicted, but equally have no chance of coming out of jail. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much for those three crisp comments. I'll go across to uh, Advocate Samarjit Patak from Karanjawala and Company. Yeah, Tarun, I think the two points I'll just like to uh, bring in here. One is that it's Supreme Court itself also has to now uh, bring in the specific procedures and timelines that every court, not only the district courts, but even the dis high courts and the district courts throughout should follow. It should, it, it should standardize the kind of procedural uh, 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 steps that needs to be taken in such applications and do away with a lot of unnecessary <clears throat> pleadings, unnecessary a change of prosecution because many times we see the entire argument is done then the prosecution the prosecutor changes from the department a new prosecutor comes he moves an application and it is allowed when it is reserved for orders it should not be allowed in my in my view so these are the kind of there are a lot of procedural uh, uh, irregularities or other unne unnecessary procedures which needs to be done away with and if at all the a process of listing started by Justice Chandrachur succeeds. Probably, I think I think all high courts should also take a cue from that and uh, you know make their listings in a way where bail applications and all of these applications, travel applications, bail applications, all of them are heard on a regular basis on every day by each of the at least the criminal benches of the respective high courts. Thanks. Thanks for that uh, closing comment. I'll go across to Mohit Saraf, managing partner, Saraf and Partners. I think uh, Mahesh mentioned about the triple test, but what happened really in the Chidambaram case, what they, the court has put additional thing is the severity of the offense which the person has been accused and what is the maximum penalty. And what is important is, yeah, because you know, remember, when you are prosecuting, you put the worst offenses. You pick up the IPC and say, what are the best we can do? So therefore, just because somebody has been accused, there should be a clear application of mine on really the prima facie evidence, whether what has been accused, is, is there an evidence on the record or not? I would say that's an important part, which is equally important. And on the economic offense, I would say what you mentioned is that really there are three, four tests. And one important thing is what is the loss to the exchequer? And the numbers comes out like crazy. Whatever number you throw, that's a great number. And I would say, again, the, the focus should be on, is there an uh, at least a prima facie evidence on a conspiracy? Like in the PNB case, there was a, a prima facie a clarity that there was, a, there, was a, there was a conspiracy to cheat back. So I would say those things are equally important. And in my view, what it'll do is because the matter will move in quick succession from a district court to high court to Supreme Court, I would say people will think 10 times before rejecting or before accepting. And that is what we are trying to do is that this entire order will bring judicial accountability, internal accountability, and people will not just take a view based on what the media is saying, or what the evidence TV is carrying on, but which is based on intelligent facts of the case. Very and that would make a big difference. You're saying that Justice Chandrachud may uh, end up driving a mindset change in the judiciary by what he's doing. Uh, uh, indeed, uh, uh, I was, in a sense, expecting Justice Chandrachud will give us a lot many opportunities to do so many episodes. In quick succession, he's taken three, four decisions. Uh, I would not like to miss the upcoming or the all, already taken decision on special benches on indirect tax issues. Very, very important. Uh, very but important. even even this issue, what he's done, uh, uh, I'm hopeful that there is a lot to look forward to in the coming 24 months. Uh, but 
this itself is a landmark decision and i would not like to also point out when uh, senior advocate parag tripathi said what about a lot of poor and marginalized their lives changed when you know they have they have no legal assistance with so many bail cases being heard and uh, a mindset change being given in a sense at the district court level more bails will happen people will get liberty but our main point was investment climate make in india which definitely gets a big push because these words come from the chief justice of india justice dhananjay yashwan chandrachud thank you so much uh, mr mahesh agarwal managing partner of agarwal law associates senior advocate parag tripathi uh, samarjit patnayak partner with karanjawal and company mohit saraf managing partner of saraf and partners appreciate your taking out time and joining on this episode at a short notice thank you so much viewers for coming in thank you so very much For more such videos subscribe to the NewsX YouTube channel hit the bell icon